All right guys, so today I'm going to be upgrading this mid 2010 Mac mini. Uh, this is the one with the DVD drive on the front of it. I uh, picked this up for a really good deal. Uh, obviously it's got an old spinner hard drive in it, really low amount of memory. Uh, but the cool thing about these mid 2010s is you can upgrade them with a solid state drive uh, and you can go all the way up to 16 gigabytes of RAM uh, with these. So uh, still very viable. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, install these components. Before I start, if you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notifications on my new videos. Uh, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna, uh, the first thing we're gonna remove is the black panel on the bottom. And all you need to do to remove this is spin it a little bit and it'll fall right out. So take that out. As you can see here, this only has one one gigabyte stick uh, for memory. This will be a very easy uh, thing to upgrade for us. We're just gonna remove like that, push out on the two clips and then remove that stick. And then you can go ahead and replace. And I had this four gigabyte kit sitting on a shelf, so that's what I'm gonna use, but I'll, I'll go ahead and upgrade it to 16 gigs once it comes in the mail. Um, go ahead and place in. Now there is a little bit of a trick. Let me, I'm not gonna gloss over this. There's a little bit of a trick with these Apple uh, RAM holders. It's, it's, they, they make it a bit tricky. What you wanna do is you wanna put it underneath this first clip and that will allow you to get it more firmly seated and you just come in and it's gonna click like that and then push down. Same thing with this one, come in 45 degree angle and then push down. Uh, now these machines require PC3-8500 memory. Uh, the faster memory will not boot, um, but again, if you get the right memory, you can go up pretty high. So now that we've got the RAM in place, what we're going to do is we're going to take our Torx bit drive and start removing the things necessary to uh, actually get to the hard drive. You can see here, there's a small connector. All you'll do is you'll lift that up and it will come out just like that. Again, it's just an upward motion and it's gonna come right out. And while this is out, you can see this one's pretty dirty. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and clean that, clean that off because that's pretty nasty. Okay, so you're gonna need to remove this screw and this screw. And then this cover will come out. Just like that. Okay, and then you've got four screws right here. And you'll go ahead and remove those. And then when you pull this off, be careful, there is a uh, wireless cable connected. You can see the cable right there. And it runs underneath here. And it'll just pop up just kind of be gentle when you remove it and it'll come right off. Okay, and then our hard drive is right here. So this is, uh, this is what we're trying to get to. It's probably a little bit easier if you're not trying to show it in a video, uh, but you kind of pull it up. And careful, there are many cables. There's one right here. but you kind of go at a 45 degree angle and it'll let you slide the drive out just like that, okay? Now what you've got connected here, if your drive's never been removed before, it's gonna have this black 
uh, paper or tape on it, and you're gonna need to remove this to be able to remove the uh, connector here, the SATA connector. Okay. And once you remove that, this will come off just like that. Okay, and we have our drive. Now, uh, you've got a temperature sensor here as well on the old hard drive. Uh, and that's that was the first thing that I, I disconnected there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out while I've got it all opened up. Okay, so now that I've got it all cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the new drive. Just like that. side, just like that. Make sure you remove these. that it can get seated into the other end of the caddy. Okay, just like that. And I wanna show you guys kind of what you're aiming for. Let me see if I can get some light in here. Now, if you look inside there, you can see uh, two little holes in the back, and that's where these go. It's not shown in a lot of videos, um, and it's kind of hard to feel, uh, but essentially, especially if you have a slimmer drive like this that isn't gonna sit fully, like you really have to get it into those holes. See, I just got it into there, and, and you'll know because it'll get past that line, and the drive will sit down in there. And now I'll be able to reconnect my SATA connection as well as this other temperature sensor. And you can actually use um, you can use a, a, a little bit of additional adhesive if you need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing reinstalled, and then. What I'm gonna do is just route it around and place it on the end here and get it stuck back onto the drive. Just like that. And make sure it's firmly seated on there. Okay, so now we've got the solid state drive in here and we're gonna just put it back together, obviously in the inverse uh, order that we took it apart. Okay guys, that's it. So now you can reinstall uh, Mac OS by just hitting uh, Command R when you're booting up and you've got basically a, a new system. So I'll put links in the description for like what kind of stuff you can use. Um, definitely able to bring these, these old Mac minis back to life and, and put them to purpose. So hope this video helps somebody and thanks for watching.